Thank you very much. How are we all doing? Wonderful. Excellent. Great to have you all with us. Um, I'm going to have to start with ladies first, of course, gentlemen. We're, we'll come back to you in a second. Valentina, you like a bit of travel. How are you enjoying Vancouver? Really love it. It's my second time in Vancouver, and I really enjoy it. Actually, um, like already two seasons I spent in, in Washington State, navigating my boat in Puget Sound waters, and it's very similar weather uh, and like climate is here in Vancouver. But yeah, I love this place. You are like a savant when it comes to travel. I see you in all different parts of the world. You've been in Thailand. Is there any significance of you returning to Thailand like after your last fight? Or, is it, or does it just happen to be on your schedule? Uh, yeah, Thailand, it's uh, my, uh, one of the favorite places. I have uh, great training facilities over there, train, uh, Tiger Muay Thai Gym. And definitely uh, during the uh, COVID and all these times, I could not travel there. That's why I was missing so much. And yeah, definitely for my next fight preparation, I find Tiger Muay Thai is the perfect place to prepare. And I also saw that you went back to like the very first hotel or hostel that you'd ever stay there in your Muay Thai career? Like, how was that? Yes, exactly. It was back in 2008, and uh, the hotel is named On On, and it's kind of like very famous. And when I fought my like professional fight in Muay Thai with Muay Thai rules, and uh, yeah, actually it was the first one. It was uh, completely different back then. It was not too modern. It has like fan rooms, no AC rooms, and now it's completely like modern and very comfortable to stay. But yes. Uh, this place has very um, much history for me because it's not only b by hotel, because of hotel, but also it's kind of like my fight, preparation, diet, and definitely Muay Thai. Love it. Great stuff. Juliana Pena. Hello. First and foremost, got to ask, how's the injury? Um, it sucks. I'm so sorry that I could not be in this main event here. Um, I injured my rib, as you guys heard. And, uh, you know, I think one thing, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had a broken rib, but it's not fun. Laughing hurts, sneezing hurts. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible injury. Wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And um, it's getting better. It's been about five weeks and six weeks total to heal. Um, eight weeks to grapple. So it's like pulling teeth, waiting to, to be able to train again. Well, I hope it gets better as quickly as it possibly can. And I, I do ask this with sensitivity. You would have been the other person on the poster. This event would have been built around you. So now that you're actually in here, what kind of feelings do you have? You know, first and foremost, I want to apologize to all of the fans. I'm from Washington State. My grandma lives 45 minutes uh, below the border in uh, Ferndale, Washington. So as a kid, thank you. As a kid, I came to Vancouver all the time for vacations. And, you know, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I feel right back at home when I got off the plane. I was... I was so sad because I was like, I miss it. I miss seeing the mountains, the trees, you know. So it's, it's good to be back in the Pacific Northwest again. And once again, I want to apologize to all the fans uh, to not be able to, to perform for you guys tomorrow night. It's, it's heartbreaking. And um, other than that, this is just uh, one chance for me to kind of sit back, eat some popcorn, enjoy the show, and, and see what, what goes down. Maybe pick some fights, try to be as entertaining as possible. So we'll see what happens. And I'm sure, Vancouver, you're going to make sure she has a great stay, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Love that. Charles Jordan. Another win. Tricky assignment last time out as well. When you face a Gracie, you know what you're in for. But on reflection, on the back of that fight, like how are you feeling now and what's the next move? Uh, I needed to level up. Uh, too many times in my career, especially in UFC, I was on razor hedge, uh, close decision, and uh, because I was immature. But I it was fun, fun, to, uh, fun fights to watch. Now I step up my uh, my game, my level. I want to bring back a belt one day for Canada. It's going to be a hard task. We have uh, uh, we have uh, GSP who set up the bar so high for us, and now everybody's like, oh. It, like you cannot be, there's never going to be another GSP. So the best thing I can be is the, the next Charles Jordan. And this is uh, what I'm going to bring for Canada. Love that. 
And I think I've got this right. Going back through your records, you've never fought here in Canada for the UFC. No. Oh, man. Yeah, it's super unfortunate. And uh, you, you guys know me. I always jump on fights. I'm, I'm late minute this, late minute that. I need to be more mature. If I want to bring back that belt, I need to take the, some time off. If there was like a month later, I would have been here on the card in Vancouver. It would have been an honor. But yeah, unfortunate stuff. But yeah, I'm here meeting people like you guys, fans. And by the way, I just want to say something. I met uh, Valentina uh, six years ago. I was just an up and coming pro fighter. I was not making any money. And I went uh, to Tiger Muay Thai. I scraped up all of the pennies that I had to go. And now I'm here on stage with a legend like her. So if there's any dreamers in the crowd, keep working hard and you're going to be here one day. Love that story. Great stuff. Thank you, Joe. John Alessio, Vancouver's own. John, I was going back through your career, like plus 50 fights, and then those, those accolades, youngest ever fighter to challenge for a UFC championship belt, jumping in against Pat Miletic, who was dominant at the time, 20 years young, like... I can't, not, there's so few people that make the walk. If you can sort of wind back the clock a little bit and just talk about that sense of occasion and how you were able to even make the walk. Most 20 year olds just haven't got much figured out at all. First of all, it's good to be back in the Pacific Northwest. Vancouver. It's been a long time since I've been home, so this is awesome. Um, yeah, going back that far, that was honestly one of the first fights that I puked before walking out to the Oh, no way. <laughs> I got so nervous. I was just a boy fighting a man um, in his hometown. That was in Iowa, that fight. So as I make the walk, people are leaning over. You're going to die today, kid. And it's like, you, you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was crazy. And now you look at the landscape of mixed martial arts, like the, the 90s and the noughties, very different. But you, you were there. So like, what are the things that really stand out to you about the differences in time? The mainstreamness. Back then, it was still banned in many states. We, we weren't on TV. We were fighting in small arenas. And now it's ESPN, mainstream as it gets. You can flip through any channel. You'll see UFC on TV. It's, it's awesome. It's great stuff, and you're one of the reasons why we're mainstream now, so we thank you very much for those thank performances you. throughout your career. Now I'm going to throw it over to the media, but for all you fans, we've got a microphone here, left of house, right of house, whichever way your perspective is. So we're going to get through our friends in the media, and then you guys will get your chance. Thank you very much. Mike, let's go. Uh, Charles, for you first, uh, after the last one, you'd been calling out Edson Barboza. Is there any progress on maybe securing that fight or when we could see you back in the cage? No, he's a bitch. No, no, yeah, that, that, was, that was dumb. <laughs> no, uh, he's higher in the rank. He wants to fight for the belt. He wants to keep going up, and he's the A side. I'm the up-and-comer. He's the, the big man. He proved uh, time and time again why he's uh, an elite uh, featherweight. So yeah, if he says no, uh, yeah, the, he, he's the A-side, but I'll get my hands on him one day. And for John, um, just curious, you know, kind of looking at the current Canadian MMA scene, where do you kind of gauge where it is right now, and who do you see as, besides maybe the man stand, sitting next to you, as some of the big future uh, fighters from this country? Yeah, I mean, uh, Mark andres fighting tomorrow night too, so he's, he's yes, there we go. <laughs> Another uh, good Canadian right there, helping uh, keep Canadian MMA you know, on the scene. But I'd like to see UFC start traveling around Canada a lot more. Put on some more shows. How about you guys, yeah? Uh, Juliana, obviously you expressed you know, your disappointment not being able to fight on this card, but you'll be there cage side. Give us the breakdown. How do you think this goes tomorrow night between Amanda and Irina? Irene better not harm one hair on that girl's head because I want my trilogy. That's all I have to say about that. Have you heard Amanda this week? She's been taking kind of pot shots at you at pretty much every opportunity. Uh, what do you think that's all about? I just, 
It cracks me up, honestly. I think I saw in a clip she said, I can kick her ass anytime I want, except for the time that you couldn't and that it really counted. So I really don't know what she's talking about. As far as I'm concerned, we're one and one, and I actually have a leg up on her because I was not stopped, I was not finished, I was never down and out. Like Rocky said, it's not about how many times you get hit, it's about how many times you get hit and keep coming forward. And she did not stop me. I was able to stop her, I was able to put her in the hospital and nobody else can say that. So I definitely think that I've been hearing, I said on Ariel that she was one foot out the door already and that she was already planning her retirement and, and going off into the sunset. And, and not if I have my way, absolutely not. Um, I'm not done with her, this is unfinished business and I'm actually here to make sure that from 9 to 10 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday, only from 9 to 10 p.m. on Saturday, not 10.01, from 9 to 10, I will be rooting for Amanda Nunes. I will be her one biggest fan in the world. And after that, you're gonna see the biggest turncoat you've ever seen. And just lastly for Valentina, uh, we haven't heard from you too much since the fight with Alexa, but Dana White has said that they're you know, working on the rematch. That's what they want. Uh, any updates on when we can see that happen and just now that you've had a few months, how have you digested the loss? Uh, you know, I'm getting ready for this rematch and I know what I have to do and yeah, I'm just getting ready, I refocus, retaking everything and you know, like um, I'm in this fight in martial arts for so long, like 30 years, it's uh, for 30 years people have like uh, three careers in martial arts but i'm still here i'm still like saying i'm the best and i will have my ch chance to say it again when i fight next alexa and for me she's a great fighter she did what she did in the fight but she kind of like fighter um how i can say it, uh, chance fighter so during the fight doing not much thing concerning the energy and waiting for a chance but actually if there is no chance where's the victory there is no victory i know she's gonna be ready for this exactly chance but the question if she will be given this chance no and get along question for the two canadians at the end uh, obviously, it's been a while since George when we had a Canadian champion. Charles, your brother's obviously coming up on the regional scene, so Mike Malott's obviously fighting Saturday in a, in a marquee spot. So, so in your opinion, what, are the, what is the state of mixed martial arts in Canada, and when do you think these Canadian fans can see another champion? I know, Charles, like you're obviously f chasing the belt now, but how, f how far away do you think until another Canadian holds a UFC title? Uh, we, it's, it's hard to say because we have a, a lot of hype train derail uh, recently in the MMA. We always say this guy's the next thing and then something, something happened. You know, you, you think you're special until you arrive in the UFC. I was the, the best featherweight and the best lightweight in Canada. I arrive in UFC and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little Nemo fish in a, full, a tank full of shark, you know, so I needed to grow. And uh, I cannot speak for the Canadian. For myself, I see myself as a sort of uh, Oliveira and uh, Dustin Poirier, just a guy who showed up every time, did his best, and one day I'll grab my, my hands on a belt. John, your thoughts? I'm gonna put my money on him. Hey! <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> for uh, John, first of all, Happy anniversary of sorts. I believe it was 23 years ago to the day that you fought for the UFC title, June 9th. Is it really? Yeah. I had to do <laughs> oh. a double take of the date, too. Congratulations. Oh, well, so, thank you. you Happy kind of anniversary. Touched on this. That's a round of applause. So I feel real old now. Thank you. <laughs> you kind of touched on this earlier, but you've gone from there to seeing this become a multi-billion dollar company. Did you ever envision this becoming such a huge thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think every fighter that helped pioneer this knew what this sport was capable of. And then, you know, as a guy who fought as the youngest title challenger in the UFC, what kind of advice do you have for young Canadians or just young fighters in general who are going into MMA? Just keep dreaming big. You gotta put everything into it. This isn't a sport that you can go in, you know, half ass Like, you need to commit everything in your life to this. I was going to school to be an electrical engineer back then. I quit it all just to pursue this, back when it really wasn't even a sport. And, you know, I was able to make a living out of it. Good stuff. 
for, uh, for Charles, you, you talked about being smarter, you know, not jumping on these short notice opportunities. Are you hopeful then that you might be able to get on a Canadian card next time out? Yeah, I, I cannot uh, spill information before uh, the, it comes out, but I think there's some very good things coming in for Canada. I cannot say dates, I, I cannot say anything, but you guys are going to be in for a treat uh, soon with, uh, when the information gets out. I, can, I cannot be the guy who says it, but yeah. If there's a Canadian card in the next uh, two or three months, uh, the, the chance of me being on it is 100%. Great stuff. Time now to throw this over to you guys, the fans. So if you want to start getting in front of those microphones, now's your time. This gentleman right here is ready to go. Let's, let's have your questions, sir. Introduce yourself and where you're from as well. I like that. Okay. My name is Yannick. Uh, question for Charles. Yes, sir. Bel oeil est dans la place. <laughs> So, question for Charles. You've been campaigning for uh, Edson Barbosa fight for a really long time. Any news about that? Uh, unfortunately, no. Like I said uh, earlier, he's the A-side. He wants to fight someone who's above in the ranking, which makes sense. And whoever UFC give me, especially if it's in Canada, I'll say yes to whoever. So, let's see what's good, what, what comes out next. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir, Merci <laughs> yes, sir, bro. If you, don't, if you don't get Barboza, have you got someone else in your sights that you would like? Uh, the UFC said a couple of names. The dates weren't uh, planned, but yeah, the, there's a name, I think, in line. Unfortunately, until the bout is signed, I cannot share the information. You tease. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm looking forward to it. I got you. Over here. Yes, please say your name. Yeah, my name is Michael. My question is for Valentina and for Juliana, actually. I know it's about six years since you guys fought. And, um, oh, wow, thanks very much. You know, let's <laughs> get to this early, right? About six years since you guys fought, and obviously, not to rub it in, Juliana, I'm a fan of yours as well, but second round submission. Would you guys ever fight again and possibly then go on to fight Amanda? Does the winner of the fight go fight Amanda? <laughs> Both of you I, I think we will have our chances to fight Amanda without fighting us again, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would absolutely love an opportunity to avenge that loss. I was dominant up until I got overzealous and punched myself into an arm bar. I know I'm better than that. And it's definitely a fight that I was always calling for in, in terms of the rematch. Uh, Valentina has moved down weight classes and your girl likes to eat, so I'm not going down to 25. Um, but you know, you, who knows, in the future, you, you never know, this sport's real weird if, if uh, that happens to be the case and we happen to be at that point in our careers. I think both of us are professional and enough to uh, do what makes sense for the fans and, and for the, the machine. Awesome. Completely agree. This is a fight what, like, if there, this is a fight what people want, yes, definitely it's going to happen. But the most important is, like, uh, that you guys, the fans, fans of martial arts, are going to enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you. I think you just played matchmaker, sir. Thank you very much. Kicking it over to the other side. Introduce yourself and your question, please. All right, hi, my name's Jeremy, and first of all, I'd just like to comment how beautiful the ladies look and how chill the guys look. It's just, the contrast is great. But my question is for Charles here. He said you're bringing Canada a belt, but you also said when you showed up in the UFC, you were a Nemo among sharks. Yes. Where are we? Are we a salmon, a cod? Are we a <laughs> giant octopus about to rip the seas down and bring the belt back? Where are we now? Uh, I'm just getting stronger physically and mentally. I arrived in the UFC, well, I'm actually surprised. He was there at 20 year old. Like when you're a 20 year old fighting 26, 27, 30 year old uh, guys, the, the frame, the build, the experience is just so much different. Now I'm, 30, uh, I'm 27 now. And when you look at the champions range in the UFC in the past, let's say five years, it's all 32, 33, 35 years old. That's me in like six, seven years. It's a long time. So that's why I'm taking my time making sure I do it properly because, uh, yeah, this is a dream for me and uh, I'm not going to waste it because I'm always immature. I need to grow up as a man, therefore as a fighter. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, just step up. I'm, I'm close to the top 15, then it's top 10, then it's top 5, then it's a belt. So, yeah, everything's uh, closer than we think. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You. Valentina, What's it like that these, these young fighters that come through, they're so eager, they want to get in there, but there's so much experience, of, of course, ahead of them. What kind of advice would you give to these young fighters that are just breaking into the UFC and they, you know, they want to go hell for leather, but it's, there's so much more to this game than, uh, than just these, right? 
Yeah, definitely. And the only experience will help this. It's kind of like there is no training for this. Yes, there is training, but if you don't feel it, you cannot actually perform the best what you can. And me, um, um, when I uh, signed with UFC, I was on that time 17 time World Muay Thai champion. So I completely came prepared with all the pressure because I remember matchmaker was asking uh, my manager on that time before the first uh, fight. It was kind of like short notice and he asked, uh, are you sure Valentina is ready for that pressure? Walk into the like all this crowd and cheers. And he said, oh yes, of course she is. And this is what I felt. My Muay Thai fights, it helped me a lot, especially like mentally prepare. And um, this is the, um, the biggest advice what I have for the uh, younger fighters who just like now starting their career and uh, to get as much experience what they can have. Yeah, nice. John, steepest learning curve for you. Uh, if you could impart some wisdom to fighters coming through after your journey through this sport from the, the darker ages, if you like, what would it be? Kind of like what Charles said, you got to take your time and you got to check your ego. Fighters have the biggest egos in the world and we let that get ahead of ourselves. And, you know, if you don't have a good trainer and manager behind you, you'll take any fight. I mean, I did my whole career. And it was a little different back then, but now you got more opportunities to, you know, really pave your own road and make the right choices. So you need a good manager behind you to guide you. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Your, your name and your question. My name is uh, Mo, and I got a question for you, John Morgan. I mean, John, John good man. <laughs> thank you. It's good. Man. But we'll get there in the end. I'll take any of those names. So um, do you think um, Hamza Chemaev can uh, headline a fight night in like, Russia, specifically Chechnya? Uh, probably not at the moment, given the current state of affairs. I don't see a return to Russia anytime soon. Um, but if we're talking like in a, in a dream circumstance, I can see him headlining somewhere in Russia, you know, back in sort of 2018, if that was the case. I'm a big fan of Hamzat. He's so very talented. You know, no one can ever say that the guy is not motivated and he's always in that gym. He's one of the hardest workers I've ever come across. So I hope that everything works out for him and he really gets uh, the opportunities to express himself properly. Thank you, boss. No, thank you. It's John Gooden, just so you know. <laughs> yes, sir, in the red T-shirt. Awesome. Uh, my name's Jaden, and I'd just like to ask a question to Valentina. Uh, so your last fight... Uh, you were looking so good, and I was just wondering, have, for your recent uh, training camp, have you brought anybody, like boxers, or anybody who can replicate a, uh, Grasso and her, her style? Uh, you know, it's kind of like not about uh, replicate Grasso and her style. It's about, um, like, get the right timing. And, um, yeah, definitely, my training partners, they are all grapplers, wrestlers, boxers, all of them. That's why kind of like Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand, it's a perfect place because there is so many training partners with uh, like so different style wise. And this is it's amazing. And definitely I will be ready for this fight as uh, like in the my best, my best shape. And it's gonna happen that I will retain and get back my belt. And new. And new. Thank you very much. Your name, sir, and your question. Uh, my name is Omar, and I wanted to say, obviously, uh, Ultimate Fighter 31 is going on right now. This question is for everybody. How do you guys see that going down? Juliana, do you want to kick this one off? Ultimate Fighter 31? Ultimate Fighter season 30 was better, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I coached and we won all my fights, I'm just saying. The only fight that we didn't win was uh, against a 43-year-old man that hadn't fought in the octagon for 13 years, so just saying. Anyways, uh, Ultimate Fighter 31, it's great. I love Conor McGregor, biggest fan ever. Love Michael Chandler, I think he's great for the sport. Um, I'm really anticipating the, the date for that. Have they said it? Is it December? Does Amanda want to square off in December at the T-Mobile <laughs> Arena and headline with Conor McGregor? Yes! I love Let's that. see it. I want to get on that card. Wherever McGregor's going, I want to go there. Love that. Valentina, have you caught the Ultimate Fighter 31 yet? 
not yet, but I'm very excited for the opportunity what fighters have. Yeah, everyone's speaking about the coaches, but everyone is forgetting about the actual fighters who's making this reality happening, right? It's not about only coaches, like Connor and Michael. They are great both, and definitely everyone is waiting for their uh, fight. Um, but I think it's an amazing opportunity for the fighters to join UFC, actually, uh, show themselves, their technique, their character, and um, yeah, yeah, it's amazing what you see doing that for the fighters. Shall they got like some uh, UFC vets that have come back, guys that I'm sure you've probably seen on the road as well, which I think's really cool. They've gone away, got some more work in, like we're all talking about, and they're ready again. What do you think about the lineup at UFC at, at Tough 31? Uh, the lineup is great. Uh, unfortunately, like Valentina said, the coaches are taking all the spotlight, I think, but it's a good thing because that's why people are watching it. Me, I only see bits about it on TikTok and the famous, you'll do what you're told by Connor. I was like, <gasps> oh my God. And you can see Chandler not feeling good. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a great season, especially because these two have such a uh, difference uh, in their 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 way of, of being, you know? So, yeah, when he said that, I was like, okay, I'm sold. I'm watching this show. John, do you still catch up with things like Tough, etc.? I do. And it's a uh, pretty cool scene, vets versus up-and-comers. I think the vets are 2-0 and right now, so it makes an old guy like me feel pretty good. <laughs> uh, but that main event of Chandler and McGregor is going to be insane. I, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, let's hope they get that all figured out. All right, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers, thank you. Over to this side, your name, sir, and your question. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Tyler. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for coming back to Canada. This means a lot to all of us here. Thank you. But uh, one thing that's on all of our mind is if Amanda does retire after this, what's going to happen in that division? Valentina? Are you willing to move up again to face Juliana? Oh, it's a good question, but you know, like, um, my weight is flyweight, and I'm very focused on uh, what's happening in my weight class at actual <laughs> timing right now, and I'm more concerned about, like, what is my fight next. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, like, my nature. I'm not looking, like, three fights ahead, four or five fights ahead. For me right now, my rematch, and this is everything what <laughs> matters for me right now. Your main focus is on 25, I totally agree. But in the future, if it were possible, would you two like to fight again? Would love. Would love, yes. And uh, as Juliana, Juliana mentioned, how do you feel on that? I, like I thought we already answered that question, no? <laughs> Let's yeah, go. We yeah. Were kind of repeating for people to actually oh, understand okay, that you're yes. going to fight no, each other. Yeah. We're both professionals. We'll do what the fans want, what the machine wants. And uh, if she's moving up because I ain't moving down, it'll happen. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. And for those that are late to the room as well, this gentleman was just alluding to the facts of like the future for 135. You're really pulling for Amanda Nunes tomorrow night, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay, so she pulled out of the fight the first time and obviously we waited, you know, six more months until that fight could occur. I needed six weeks, maybe eight for the, for the grappling, but either way, I messed up. I have a lot of integrity, a lot of honesty, and right when I got injured, I called the machine and I told them, hey, I, I broke a rib, I'm out. I should have waited for Irene and Rocky to fight, and then they would have not been able to find a replacement on two weeks' notice for Amanda so that she wouldn't have had any choice but to fight me and push the fight back out um, later. But that's not the way that it works. My integrity got in the way, and, you know, they, they replaced me right away. And uh, it's a bummer that I lost that fight. But like I've said a million times, we're one and one. There's unfinished business there. And, yes, from the hours of 9 to 10, I will be Amanda's biggest fan. Looking forward to the build-up in this one. Uh, kicking over to this side, your name, sir, and your question. Yeah. I'm Sean from uh, Victoria, BC, and I have a question for John and Charles. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for Canadian MMA. John, you're a legend. Charles, you're making a name for yourself in the UFC. Obviously, Valentina and Juliana have fought Amanda before, but who do you think has the better strengths in their arsenal to beat and dethrone Nunes if Aldana fails to do so? Who are you throwing that question to, please? Charles and John. Thank you. The answer needs to go to me because I'm the one that actually beat her. Well, okay. So, like, <laughs> literally, tap her, Amanda. Tapped, I don't know. Tapped. 
Valentina's tap. decisions were very close. I don't. I say that a submission and a tap and and like lights out done is way more dominant. That's than a true. Decision. I was in, I was in shock when that happened. Come on, <laughs> come on. I have to. But you go ahead, it. Charles. You answer. They they fought twice and uh, maybe uh, she won the decision. But uh, no, you you finished during the first fight. So yeah, it adds up into the 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 balance. Uh, sorry, I don't know how you guys say that in the the. the uh, equation, yeah, the equation yeah. would be the, the term, and uh, uh, and for Valentina they fought so many times and it was always super close. So, I mean, it, it's a fight game. It's so hard to put uh, prediction. Everybody's talking about let's say tomorrow J Oliveira and Dariush. It, it's it's so hard when you get to these level. One little mistake can change everything, and we saw that in the, the recent Valentina fight. It was just a little slip, and then boom, you lose the title. You want to get it back. Everything so. It's a, it's a super hard sport, and uh, one mistake can cost you a lot. And if they fight again with uh, Amanda, anything can happen. So that's what makes this sport the best sport in the world, is you can think, oh, it's going to be an easy for night for this guy or this girl, and then boom, lose the title. So uh, yeah, MMA, MMA is a hard sport to, to put predictions on. So yeah, I'm leaving it at that. Time for you to throw some fuel on the fire now, John. <laughs> Julian, if you fight the way you fought Nunez the first time, you are going to dominate again. That was, I was there for that. I saw that fight. It was an amazing performance. So you replicate that all day long. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I got complaints in my apartment. When you won, like the whole building was going crazy. <laughs> me, me not being mean towards you, but I was like, man, Amanda has been super dominating. And then you start landing. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. And then the, the crowd, just everybody in the apartment exploded. So, yeah, it was a wonderful night for you. But notice, like you say, dominating. Yes, she has been dominating. And I would never want to take away from, you know, what she's accomplished in the sport. But Rhonda had such a massive following. She was main eventing everything. And then if you go to Amanda's last seven fights, she's only main evented twice. One of them was because of an injury. I think Aldo came out on injury and the second one was me. And this third one was going to be me, but I had to fall out due to, to injury myself. I mean, me beating her made her relevant again because she hasn't had the ability to main event in any of her title fights in the last seven literally only two main events i mean i i just think if you look at the countdown numbers if you look at the embedded numbers i mean the co-main event has seven times more views than amanda's and she's the main event you know so she she, she can't draw flies i'm just saying i think we're gonna have our most important question of the afternoon go ahead what's your name what's your question my name is ken and my question is how did you be, get to be such strong women? Yeah. Love that. <laughs> Our mothers, huh? Our mothers? Yeah. Valentina, why don't you ask on that one first? Um, I would say it's because of my family, because of um, my mother, because she is um, the reason why, why I am started martial arts to practice. My older sister Antonina, she's also martial artist, and our fa family, my mom, she like um, sparks this flame in me, love for martial arts, and it's like stay with me forever. It's motivate me every single training to be better, stronger, uh, more confident without losing any uh, femininity, because I think for female sport, it's very important. You have to be strong, you have to be confident, but in the same time, you have to be woman. And uh, my mother, I'm sure you have a very strong mom. I, I would assume otherwise I don't think you would have the courage to ask a question in front of all these people. So kudos to you. You're awesome. You remind me of my daughter and you're so cute. Thank you for the question. Uh, my mother, of course, has been the, the biggest driving force in me. You know, she was a migrant worker, worked in the fields picking strawberries, peaches, whatever was in the season. And she instilled a, an amount of strength in me that literally is my main driving force. I come from a long line of strong women. And it, it starts from our mothers and my mother giving birth to me. And, and it's, we owe it all to our moms, honestly. <laughs> Givers of life. Thank you so much for your question. That was yes. excellent. Thank you very much. Aww. Yeah, big round of applause. Come on, look at yes, that. Yes, so cute. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a question for Juliana and Valentina. You seem very friendly on stage right now and leading into this fight, because it was going to be you, Julie, Amanda had brought up she used the fight that you two had in the southpaw stance of Valentina to kind of understand how to beat you. Do you think maybe if Amanda doesn't retire and retains her belt this weekend, we can maybe see you two training so that we can get the decision that you were robbed of taken back because you're not coming up, and then we can get your belt back. How, do, how does that sound? Can we get some training footage between you guys so that we can get rid of this goat and keep the divisions going? Interesting. First, you want to fight us together and then train together first. Yeah, it's that was different, guys. That was different, guys. I like the way you look together when you're not bloody. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. You know, I think that this is a small world, and and uh, you know, in MMA especially, you always are. You know, this, excuse my French. You're always sniffing each other's farts in this game. You know what I mean? It's like you're. I train with this guy, but this guy's best friends with this guy, and then that guy trains in the gym as the person that I'm supposed to fight. You know, it's a small world in MMA, and you know, especially since there is unanswered questions as far as what's going to happen in the future. You don't really necessarily want to be. Um, training with the enemy if you could say but at the same time they say keep your friends close keep your enemies closer so it might be a good thing to to be training partners in the future i'm definitely open to it um i'll train with anybody but yeah no it's uh, it, it would depend i would just say yeah it's, it's kind of like the same thing i think but it's definitely juliana she is very strong fighter and like so much character so much like technique and i would love to train with her but at the same time if yeah. <laughs> Uh, five minute warning, by the way, folks. Yes, the gentleman in the whites. Akash Narwal from Counterhook MMA. I was at the first fight, Juliana versus Nunes, where you shocked the world. What would you do in a rematch to reshock the world against Nunes? You know, I, I can say that mentally the fight for me was lost in the first 10 seconds of the fight because I was thrown for a complete loop. And I think that it's funny that she says I can kick her ass at any time, blah, 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 and I could have done all this. It was like the fact is this. Here's the reality. You had to fire your entire team, and then you had to quit your gym and change your entire fighting style in order to beat me. You had to revamp everything, and I wasn't, I wasn't on it. She caught me off guard. I knew that that fight was lost in the first 10 seconds because I was completely shell-shocked right away when she came out of Southpaw, and uh, I wasn't ever to able to make the adjustments. Next time, I will be ready if she comes out Southpaw, orthodox, standing on her head, walking on her tippy toes, whatever you want to call it, I will be ready, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Thank you very much. The next man, introduce yourself and your question, please. Hey, I'm Ernesto, and I'm from here in Vancouver. So my question is for Juliana. So, you know, of course, people talk. There's been a couple of rumors going around about you faking an injury. What do you have to say about this? What, would, what did you say your name was? Ernesto. Ernesto. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ernesto, have you ever broken a rib before? Yep. You have? And how was it for you? I got hit by a car. It was... Um, not too good. Yeah, Ernesto, I've actually been ran over by a car too. I, I, I got ran over walking on the sidewalk, yeah. So just so you guys know, I've dislocated both my arms. I've dislocated or uh, torn both my knees, if you guys can zoom in and see these scars. I've broken pinkies, I've broken fingers, I've got my head split open. This game is full of injuries. We are in the fighting game and injuries happen. I would, let me just say, for the record, I would never, ever fake an injury. Like I told you guys before, I have a lot of integrity and a lot of honesty, and you know, shying out the back way and faking an injury, the Pena Power does not do that. She backs down from nobody, and I did not, and I will not ever fake an injury, especially in order to fight somebody that I already beat and made tap, Tapper Amanda. Okay, thank you. Let's keep this rolling. Introduce yourself, Sarah, new question. Hello, uh, my name is Dawson. I got two really quick questions for you. First one is for Charles Jourdain. So it seems like the narrative uh, after your previous fight was more so about how Crone Gracie was overhyped and less about your performance. What would you have to say to the people who were saying that? And my second question is, do you guys want to be in my B-reel real quick? <laughs> yeah, sure, for the B-reel. And yeah, when it comes go. to Crone, uh, Kron, I had a wonderful strategy uh, from inside the guard, uh, the, the, the way I was pulling away, I didn't throw a single kick during that fight. I had a very good strategy and people who are 
saying, oh, jiu-jitsu is over hyped and their crun is over high, blah, blah, blah. Like, he has three fights in the UFC. He has a fight of the night against Cub when Cub was uh, up in the rankings, and he beat Alex Caceres, who's ahead of me in the ranking. So he's a very capable man. I think I just applied the, the, the perfect plan, and he couldn't answer to anything of that. That's why I had a dominant 30-27 win against him. But I'm, when I saw the thing online, I'm like, man, you're talking about... Um, uh, uh, you're talking about a man who, who fought all of his life, won the ADCC, like he's a very accomplished fighter. And uh, yeah, it was in his night, but you don't need, like he had the courage to step in and we have to give uh, uh, hands at him for doing that. I well said. Be real time. Yes, sir. As that happens, step forward to the mics. We're running out of time. Yes, please. Next one. Let's go. Let's go. My question is for Juliana. If Amanda does lose, would you do the trilogy with Amanda first or fight Aldana for the title? Um, at the end of the day, it boils down to um, obviously holding the belt, but then there's also something about legacy that's a really uh, difficult question. You know, I was a little bit offended, hurt that like I came out on an injury and like I thought me and Irene were cool. She didn't even call me, ask me if I was okay. She didn't ask like, do you need anything? No, she just swooped in and took my fight and I was like, what the heck? Like, that's, that's fighting. I, I, that's a reason to want to fight her. So if uh, I'm sorry, you're upset she didn't come with flowers to your front door. Yeah, I mean, what? You don't even ask if I'm okay and then take my fight. What the heck kind of friend is that? I thought we were cool. Um, but no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I want to fight for the belt. That's the only thing that matters. It's about legacy. But at the same time, I think that for the fans, you know, being one and one, uh, the trilogy is also something that's always going to be on my sights. And right now, that's the only thing that that I see happening. When you're one and one in Rochambeau or, you know, rock, paper, scissors, you guys just stop. You're just like, we're one and one. Like, we don't, we don't, no. You go best two out of three, you know? So for me, it's about getting that fight. Nice. This is, uh, this is going on in the background here. Next question, please. Uh, hello, my name is Connor White. I'm from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And I've got two questions, both for Valentina. One, are you single? Two, do you want my number? <laughs> Woo! Gotta shoot your shot. Woo! I love you. Woo! Thank you. I am single and I am not sure about the number. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's not a no. My guy, well done. This looks like a great way to wrap up the QA. Do we have a small person coming to the mic? Nah, he just let me. Oh, well, you got it. I mean, that, that was your leverage right there. Let's both get up there. That's it. That cuts a good look. Let's go. Hey, what up, Juliana? What hey, up, man? Uh, we drove up from Tacoma, Washington this morning. And so as a fellow Washingtonian, you know, we've been rooting for you. Hey, is there any way to put in a word to make that trilogy? Hey, Tommy, hold on. Hey, is there any way to make that trilogy in Seattle? Or even Spokane or something? To Uncle Dana? You know, I would love uh, for the UFC to come to Spokane. Uh, I know that Dana White's favorite movie, Vision Quest, was filmed in Spokane. And when I won the Ultimate Fighter in 2013, he came to Spokane to, to visit it. And they were looking at venues and stuff like that. I think that Spokane, the 509, is a fight town. And first and foremost, I know that it would sell out and it would just yeah, yeah. create massive waves. And, and they haven't gone to Spokane. And right. that would be amazing. I, I would love to headline a, a, a fight in Spokane, Washington, absolutely. So, Dana, if you're listening, Vision Quest, 509, make it happen. Hey, Seattle, Tacoma, Spokane, let's go. Hey, let's go. Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. Before I let you guys go, John, I've, I was told some information before I came on stage. You're part of an elite police squad in your current day job now. Very quick answer. Like, what's more dangerous, a shift in your current job or getting that octagon door closed behind you? Well, the octagon's fun. Yeah. Well, my job... Not always fun. Right, good stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by. We're celebrating 30 years here with the UFC. Without all of you, it wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much for all of your efforts over the years. And thank you guys as well. We're gonna get these guys out of here. Then it's on to the weigh-ins. This was a warm-up. Warm your vocal cords up today and get ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much, Vancouver. <laughs>